been a while since I've done a step problem, so here's a nice one from the 2014 step two. Given that y equals x times u, where u is a function of x, write down an expression for dy dx. Part one, use the substitution y equals x times u to solve dy dx equals 2y plus x over y minus 2x. Given that the solution, oh sorry, given that the solution passes through the point one one, give your answer in the form uh, of a quadratic in x and y. And then part two, using the substitution x equals x plus a and y equals y plus b for appropriate values of a and b or otherwise, solve this other differential equation uh, given that it passes through 1, 1. This is actually a pretty nice step problem, not too difficult in the grand scheme of things, but if this is the first time or one of the early times in your step preparation, uh, this may seem quite challenging. But I'm going to walk you through it as if I was sitting a step paper and how I would be thinking about it, the things you want to be looking out for. Let's start with the preliminary part. Pretty straightforward, just using the product rule here. So we have y equals x times u. So dy dx is just going to be u plus x du dx. Nothing really challenging there. Part one, we are told to use this substitution, which very, very conveniently they've told, given us in the preliminary part. So probably want to use that. So we've got dy dx, which is u plus x du dx equals, and just subbing it in here, we get 2xu plus x over xu minus 2x, like so. And very conveniently in this fraction, the x's cancel out. And so we're just left with 2u plus 1 over u minus 2, like so. Very nice. And I can bring this u over to the right-hand side here, and I get x times du dx. I'm just going to save you the hassle of uh, simplifying this, but you're going to get uh, minus u squared plus 4u plus 1 all over u minus 2, like so. And we now notice that this differential equation is separable. Great, that means, well, it's not going to be too challenging to solve this. We just need to separate it and then do some integration. Hopefully the integration isn't too bad. So we get u minus 2 over negative u squared plus 4u plus 1 equals, uh, sorry, du equals 1 over x dx from rearranging. And now I can just integrate, integrate, and put a plus c. In fact, let me bring this over here. Uh, I'm just going to try and keep everything on the screen if I can. And the right-hand side is nice and easy, so I'll start with that. That's just the ln of the absolute value of x plus a constant c. And on the left-hand side, again, this is quite nice because if I differentiate the denominator here, we're going to get minus 2u plus 4, which is precisely minus 2 lots of the numerator. And so that tells me that this is, again, kind of using the reverse chain rule or whatever you want to call it. This is going to be minus a half times ln of the absolute value of minus u squared plus 4u plus 1. And I don't need a plus c on the left-hand side because if I had a constant here, c1 and c2, let's say I could just merge them together and create a new constant and call that c. Okay, so we have this here, and very nicely we've got lots of uh, lns, so we can get, just by rearranging this, we get minus u squared plus 4u plus 1 in absolute value uh, to the power of negative a half is equal to a times the absolute value of x, where here I've just called c uh, e to the a. Uh, no, sorry, not c, e to the a. I've called it ln a, where a is e to the c, sorry. And we get this nice little equation here. And now we're going to use the boundary conditions to help us determine what a is. We know when x is 1, y is 1. But very nicely, that also means u is 1. Because 1 equals 1 times u. The solution to this is u equals 1. So if I substitute that in here, I get minus 1 plus 4 plus 1 to the negative a half equals a times 1. And so here I've got 4 to the power of minus a half. That's a half. And that equals a. So a is a half. So if I substitute that in here, I've got uh, a half times the absolute value of x equals minus u squared plus 4u plus 1, it, like so. And I'm going to now replace the u's with y's over x's. And so I get a half times the absolute value of x equals negative y squared over x squared plus 4y over x plus 1 to the power of negative a half, like so. And the question says to give our answer in a quadratic in terms of x and y. I'm just a bit hesitant to get rid of these absolute values yet because we just got to be careful. I don't want to have to think about plusing, minusing, square rooting, negative numbers, all this sort of stuff. So I'm just going to be very, very careful here. But uh, let's multiply through by x squared just to make this a little bit nicer. Uh, and oh, I guess I need to be conscious about this minus a half in the power. 
So if I take out a factor of x squared from uh, this fraction here, I get 1 over x squared to the power of negative a half times minus y squared plus 4yx plus x squared to the power of negative a half. And this is very nice because this thing here is just the absolute value of x like so, so absolute value of x uh, multiplied by minus y squared plus 4yx plus x squared to the power of minus half, and that equals a half times the absolute value of x. Those can essentially be cancelled out because um, x is not the constant 1, and so we have a half equals this guy here, and now... Now, well, at least we can uh, uh, take the reciprocals on both sides. So we get 2 equals uh, the square root of the absolute value of minus y squared plus 4yx plus x squared, like so. Awesome. Amazing. And then I can square both sides because the absolute value thing has to be non-negative. So I get 4 equals absolute value of minus y squared plus 4yx plus x squared like so. So a bit of messy algebra, which we do have to be very careful of because step will eat you alive if you make any assumptions about positive and negative and square root. Like you do have to be careful with the algebra. But this here would be our final answer. And now you might be asking, can I get rid of these absolute values? Annoyingly, not quite because this is a quadratic in terms, like if I factor out the x squared and like go back to this thing here, this quadratic can be both positive and negative depending on the value of u. So annoyingly, you can't really do too much with that unless they did tell me some information about x and y in the question, but they don't. That's not a 1, that's an absolute value. And so our answer is just this for part 1. Okay, sweet. So now we've got part 2 to solve. So I'm just going to bring this question down and we can solve that. Okay, so now we'll move on to part 2 where we've got this slightly different differential equation. Now, it's a little bit more complicated because they've given us these a's and b's, which we're expected to determine, to, to solve this differential equation. Now, before I dive in and just sub this in, I just want to be quite careful about how I'm going to do this. I want to think two steps ahead. Now, with the step, if you're new to step, generally speaking, if you're doing part two or part three of a question, likelihood is you have to use the previous part, a bit like how we use this preliminary part up here to help us with part one. Now, that could be a direct application of part one, or it could be that there's we want to use a similar thing to our method in part one. So if we actually just go back up to our methodology in part one up here, when we were solving this differential equation, sorry, let me actually go back to the question first. We had, we were given this substitution for free. They told us, hey, we can use this and we'll, that's going to help us solve this. And it did help us solve this. But how exactly did this substitution help us? Well, if we go back to our, to our workings out up here, if I can scroll, we can see that it was actually, this was a really, really nice step because the x's all cancelled out. And that meant that this equation then became nice and separable and we could solve it, yay. And so maybe we can do the same down here, except if I just did like y equals x times u, like you might be thinking, well, why can't I just use the same substitution? Well, you can see here that the, if I did do x times u, this would have an x in it, this would have an x in it, but that there's a constant then, so it wouldn't quite cancel out the x's. It wouldn't be as nice. So that's why we've got these a's and b's here. And maybe we can use these a's and b's in, in a certain way to, to help us. So we're just going to bear in mind that the, the trick to part one, or one of the many things that made part one nice, was the fact that the x's cancelled out. So let's plug in x equals x plus a and y equals y plus b. But then we're going to think, is there any chance we can get things to cancel out? So if we look at the left hand side, we've got dy dx, which because these are just uh, monic linears, this will be dy times dx, uh, not times dx, dy by dx, and this equals uh, capital X plus A minus 2y, so minus 2y minus 2b minus 4, all over 2x plus 2a plus y, so plus y plus b minus 3. Now, this, this motivates what I was talking about a second ago, or this motivates what I'm about to say from what I was talking about a second ago, we can now choose a and b to make the constant terms vanish. And then we're just going to have x minus 2y and then 2x plus y in the denominator. And it's now back to 
uh, essentially something that looks kind of similar to this and we could in theory use the same substitution we expect it to work quite nicely now this may, if if we were just given part two this would be a completely random like leap of faith step but because we've done part one it, this step doesn't seem so unreasonable to choose a and b to make this like this constant term on the numerator and the denominator zero there's, there's reason behind it and that reason was because if those are zero, we can use this nice substitution we did in part one. And this is the mindset you've got to have with step where these later parts of the problems by themselves are going to be super challenging. But if you think about the methods and the techniques that you used in earlier parts, it's going to help you digest and break these down. So let's just do some very basic simultaneous equations. We want a minus 2b minus 4 to be zero. And we want 2a plus b minus 3 to be zero. If you solve these, you get a is 2 and b is negative one like so you can just test both of those work or you can solve it and great so we're just going to bear that in mind and we're going to well just plug in a equals two and b equals minus one and so this just gives us x minus two not two b two y all over two x plus y like so okay amazing and now we're back to this very nice linear look well not linear equation but a nice little differential equation looks very similar to part one in fact, suspiciously similar. This is beautiful if you spot it. You might be tempted here to do the substitution at y equals x times u and try and get something similar to part one. But this looks awfully similar to part one. In fact, if I take the reciprocals on, on both sides, so I put dx dy equals 2x plus y over x minus 2y like so, and stare at this. These look very, very similar, except capital X here is kind of behaving like lowercase y, and capital Y here is behaving like lowercase x. And if you stare at this, these two are exactly the same then. And so that means, in fact, I can just use my answer from part one. Just need to be careful, though, that about this point here being one, one. So let's just be careful of that. So when lowercase x is 1, capital X is equal to, well, x minus a, which is going to be 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. When y is 1, capital Y is going to equal y minus b, which is going to be 1 minus negative 1, which is 2. Okay, so I can't quite use exactly this solution here, but I can do everything the same up to when I worked out what the constant a was which was up here so let me take this solution I'll copy and paste that and paste that there like so except here i've just got to be careful about the y's and x's being modeled up so here this was with uh, y equals ux and so therefore over here uh, I'm going to have equals a times, so our x here is our capital Y, and our u here is y divided by x, which is now going to be capital X divided by capital Y. So we've got that squared plus 4 times x over y plus 1 to the power of negative half, and this equals some constant a times capital Y. And now we can sub in these boundary conditions here. When capital X is negative 1, capital Y is 2. And so if I sub that in, I've got the absolute value of negative a half squared plus 4 times a negative a half plus 1, all to the power of negative a half, equals A times 2, or 2A. Wonderful. Now it's just about simplifying this. So here we've got negative a quarter plus 4 times minus a half. That's going to be minus 2 plus 1 to the negative a half equals 2a. And so here we've got minus 9 over 4 plus 1, so minus 5 over 4. And normally that doesn't look like it simplifies nicely. Equals 2a. So 5 over 4 to the negative a half is going to be 2 over root 5 equals 2a. And so a is 1 over root 5, like so. Okay, so a is 1 over root 5. If we now just plug that back into here, it's very, very messy just because I'm trying to keep everything on screen. It needs to be, obviously, when you're writing this out in an exam, make sure it's laid out a lot more neatly than I'm presenting it to be. This is going to be minus 
uh, x over y squared plus 4x over y plus 1 to the power of negative a half equals 1 over root 5 times the absolute value of y. And now all I need to do is substitute in um, what x is. So a capital X is x minus a, so x minus 2, and capital Y is y plus 1, like so. And now all I do is substitute both of those into this here, and thankfully it doesn't tell me to simplify or anything. Uh, very thankfully, it would get very messy otherwise. So I just substitute these in here. So I'll get minus x minus 2 over y plus 1 squared, plus 4 times x minus 2 over y plus 1, uh, plus 1 to the power of negative half equals 1 over root 5 times the absolute value of y plus 1, like so. And you can actually cancel out the y plus 1s like we did earlier with the uh, modulus of x. And so you get absolute value. Of, I'm kind of skipping a couple of steps here. But absolute value of minus x minus 2 squared plus 4 times x minus 2 times y plus 1 plus y plus 1 squared to the power of minus a half equals 1 over root 5, like so. And again, you could take the reciprocals and square and stuff uh, and make things a bit nicer. But I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And that's how you can solve a step differential equations problem. Of course, things did get a bit, bit messy, and there is a lot of algebra involved. That's normally the case. So if you're thinking, oh, what can I do to help prepare? Firstly, get amazing at A-level math. Like, be able to solve differential equations with your eyes closed. Solve simultaneous equations with your eyes closed. Like, it's, it's small things, but this will save you time in the exam. And you need to be able to do this, like, very, very quickly. So depending on, you know, what you're prioritizing or how good you are at algebra, that's step one. Like, getting really, really good at algebra. The, but then also whilst doing that, you're building your intuition. So like here, for example, in the first part, I re recognize, oh, the thing was up here. I recognized very quickly that this was a separable differential equation. And so that's a, a reassuring feeling for me as the person sitting this in the step exam. That, okay, cool, I'm on the right lines because I can solve this by separating the variables. Whereas if you have to think for a few minutes and play around with this to work out whether you can solve this or not, it's going to take you longer and it's, you're not going to be as confident in the exam. But then, of course, the crucial thing is remembering that previous parts are still super useful for subsequent parts in step. That's like one of the key mindsets to doing well at step is you're going to get stuck on later parts, but then just going, oh, actually, maybe I can use a similar idea or the result from a previous part to help me. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll leave another step video on screen. As I said, this is the first one I've done in a while, but only plenty of them in the past. So I'll leave another cool one on screen. I'll catch you over there.